hi, what I thought would be interesting would be to solve problems that I've never seen before so that you can get some of the ideas that I get whenever I need to solve a problem in theory or computer science in general. So the problem that we have uh, today is we have three different languages, L1, L2, and L3. And remember that a language is just a set of strings. And the claim is that if we intersect two of them and concatenate it with the third, then we might as well just concatenate the first with the third, intersect it with the second and the third. And the first thing that I do is I try to look at an example to see is there some kind of pattern that we can look at to see why this claim is true. It doesn't prove it in general, but it's a good starting point to getting the ideas of how to actually prove it. So I'm going to come up with an example here. I don't have anything planned. This is uh, totally off the cuff. And I'm not even going to edit this video at all, so you can see that I'm really doing this live. So I'm going to have uh, a really simple example here. So it's not B2, it's L2. And let's have this one be uh, BAA. And then L3, let's see, is, oh, I don't know. Um, I, 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 should, I should put two things in here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So then let's say that L3 has two things. Let's do A, A, and then A, B. Okay, so let's look at the left side. So L1 intersect L2. That's going to be just the string A, B. That's the only thing in common between the two. So then this thing concatenated with L3. That means I'm going to take A, B, and then put it with these two. So that's going to be A, B, A, A and then A, B, A, B. So just take this guy, concatenate it with that guy second, this guy with that guy, so that's what we get. Then if we evaluate on the right side, we get L1 um, concatenated with L3, that's gonna be, oh, it's gonna have four things in it. That's gonna be A, B, B, A, A. I need a better curly bracket than that. So A, B, B, A, A. So that's that one, this one is a, B, A, A. So, so we did that. Now let's do these ones. So it's A, B, B, A, B. And then this one is A, B, A, B. So then L2 concatenate with L3. So, so we're looking good so far. So these two are in there. That's what we expect to happen. So then L2, L3, that's going to be triple A's. Uh, then B A A A A. There's a sheep here. Uh, then A B A A. That's what we should expect to see. So we did those ones, and then now this pair. So that's A A B. Then Bab. So three A's in the middle, and then A B A B. Oops. So B A B. So then therefore these are the only two, so that's uh, in the same one, these are in the same, and none of the others are the same if I can, yeah. So there's nothing in common between them. Okay, so let's see. So in order to prove, so whenever you want to prove that uh, two sets are equal, my usual technique, and this is the generally accepted technique, is to show that one is a subset of the other. Okay, so what we would want to do is we want to show that this guy, what we ended up with, is a subset of the things that are in common between here. So that's, I might as well just write it all out here. So that's going to be A, B, A, 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 B, A, B. So, and so that set is clearly the same and we want it to be the same. But in order to show that, we need to show that anything that ends up over here is over here, and anything over here ends up over here. So we need to show that not only is a subset in this direction, but also this direction. Okay, and I don't see any particular structure that we can use other than, than something like that. So, unfortunately. But it's a good idea to do an example anyway to see that it actually does hold. If you have some claim that someone makes, and you do an example on it, and it turns out to be wrong, then you don't have to waste your time anymore on that. Okay, so let's see. 
So if we want to show that this is an equal, let's do that it's a, that it's a subset this way. So I'm going to show that the left side, actually I'm going to write it this way. So I'm going to call this thing the left-hand side, and this thing is the right-hand side. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to show first that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. Okay, so if so, what we need to show is that uh, for... Uh, I'll write it in English. So for all uh, LMs, elements in the left-hand side, uh, the element that we're looking at is also in the right-hand side. And the reverse direction needs to hold, too, to show that if you swap LHS and RHS here, it should also be true, but we're only showing one direction here. So we need to show it for all elements, so let's just pick one. So uh, pick any x in the left-hand side, and the goal here is to show that x is also in the right-hand side. Oh, obviously, we haven't shown that yet, but we want to show that. Okay, so if it's on the left-hand side, that means that because this um, uh, concatenation here, that means that x is the concatenation of two strings, a string from this part and then a string from this part. That's just what concatenation means. So then, therefore, x is equal to y, z, uh, for some, for some uh, y in the intersection, and z in L3. That, that's just what it means. Okay, so then what we want to show is that... Okay, yeah, th that's good, that's good. So, that, so since we know that y is in L1 because it's in the intersection of L1 and L2. So since y is in L1, that means that x is equal to yz, because that's what it's defined to be, is in L1 concat with L3, because that's just what it means to be in the concatenation. Something in L1 and something from L3, which is what z is. But that same logic also works uh, for L2 because it is totally symmetric. So, oops, not Z. So since Y is in L2, X is, in, is equal to YZ is also in L2, concat with L3. And so therefore, since X is in both of them, it's in this set and this set, it must be in the intersection of the two. And so therefore, uh, since X is in both, it is in the intersection. And that's, uh, and we've effectively proved that there. So therefore, the left-hand side is a subset of right-hand side because I picked any element on the left-hand side. Okay, so then now what we need to do is we need to show that the right-hand side is a subset of the left. So right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. There might be a, a more direct way to prove this, but this is generally the best way of showing that two sets are, the, are uh, equal. So if, if we want to show the right-hand side is a uh, subset of the left-hand side, we need to show for all... Let me do a better all there. So for all elements uh, x in the right-hand side, we want to show x is in the left-hand side. Okay, so let's pick any x on the left hand, uh, on the right-hand side. So pick any x in the right-hand side, which is this thing. So L1 concat with L3 intersects L2 concat L3. So that means that uh, x is in this guy and then x is in this one. So x, so that implies x is in the the first thing, and x is in the second thing. Okay. Um, so that means that x is equal to uh, some string y and z, where y comes from L1, z comes from L3, and also x is equal to, I have to give them different names because they might be different, 
but since it's concatenation, we have that we can pick the same string here. So notice that on because concatenation is independently picking elements from the sets, I can pick anything from L1 and anything from L3. So therefore, I can have the same choice if I wanted to in L3. Uh, the string that's in L1 and the string that's L2, the, those, those independently could be totally different. But since L3 is the same language on the end, I might as well just pick the same suffix, which is Z, uh, Z here. So this over here, I'm going to call the string that's from L2 W, but I'm going to pick the same uh, string from L3. So Z is in L3 and W is in L2. So that means that uh, we can fact, because the, the string X always ends in a Z, so I'll write that down. So I'm gonna go up here. So since X ends in Z, um, therefore we can factor it out. So uh, that means that uh, Y and W, Let's see. Is that what I want to claim? So let's see. So if I want to show that it's in the intersection, that means that, oh, okay, that yeah. We, so since X is equal to this thing and X is equal to this, they, the strings must be the same. So that means that X is equal to uh, y z, which is also equal to x z. And since the two strings end the same way, that implies that y equals x. Uh, I, I mean, oh, I did it wrong. Uh, w z. So since these two strings are the same, they end in the, in the same, they're the same string and they end the same way, that means that y is equal to w. So that means that the string x that we picked uh, must, or at least the beginning part of it, must belong to L1 and L2 because the first part in this case was in L1 and the second part in the second case was in L2. Therefore, since X is equal to both of them and we have concluded that the first part of the string is uh, the same, we've shown here that the first part was in L1, the, second, the first part over here was in L2. Since they're equal, <laughs> that means that it's in L1 and L2. The prefix of X before the Z part is in the intersection of the two. And so therefore, um, uh, X is equal to YZ. I'll, I'll just stick with Y here. So then Y is in L1 intersection L2. Z is, Z is in L3 by definition. And so therefore, X is in the intersection of L1 and L2 concat with L3, which is exactly what we, what we wanted to prove. Okay, that was a roundabout way of proving it. I mean, it wasn't really roundabout, but it was a, a, a long uh, route. Um, and it wasn't exactly the same proof in both cases, but it's the same general strategy, which is to show that one thing is a subset of the other one. Um, so in theory courses, you'll find at the very beginning proofs like this, where you have to show that one thing is a subset of the other with regard to certain languages. The key over here was that we identified that the beginnings were identical because they were the, in fact, the same string. They're both X. So therefore we have proven this. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this particular problem into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.